Okay, I will we'll call this meeting to order. And uh, does anyone have a disclosure of pecuniary interest or the general nature thereof? Oh, I'm sorry. I just have the agenda in front of me, but there's an actual sheet, sorry. This is a public meeting as required by section 42 of the drainage act to afford affected landowners an opportunity to make representation with respect to the engineer's report regarding the Grauberg drain. Does any member of council have a disclosure of interest concerning this proposal? Seeing none. The purpose of this meeting is to discuss the technical aspects of the engineer's report for the Grauberg drain. Concerns regarding individual assessments will not be dealt with until after the final report has been considered, adopted, and a provisional bylaw passed. A meeting for the quarter revision regarding assessments will be scheduled at a later date, and notice will be mailed to the owner of every property that has been assessed into the subject drain. Mr. Brooks, I'm going to call on you. He's the Director of Infrastructure and Community Service. I'm going to ask him to review, review the process to date. You're muted, Jeff. Okay, that's better. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll just run through um, the process and what got us to today's meeting here. So. The municipality received a petition under Section 4 of the Ontario Drainage Act from Mike Mortensen on July 10th of 2020. On August 24th of 2020, the municipality appointed Brandon Widner of Spreet & Associates to prepare the report. A site meeting was held on September 14th, 2020 with all the landowners uh, in the Grauberg drain. Subsequent to the on-site meeting, additional petitions were received from Ed Pearl, Peter Gredig, and Carl Thompson. On November 23rd, 2020, Council appointed Brandon Winder under Section 78 to improve a portion of the Grauberg drain in addition to already being appointed under Section 4. Uh, Brandon Winder submitted his report on December 21st, 2020, and the report along with a notice of tonight's meeting to consider the report were sent out to all landowners assessed in January of 2021. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. And Brandon Widner, who is the engineer with Spreet and Associates, who's done this, is going to now uh, summarize the report for us. Hey, good evening, everybody. Um, tonight we have the Grauberg drain. Now the Grauberg drain is located um, in the northwest side of Mapleton, and it goes up to essentially the lands where Mortenson Road crosses Ferguson Line. So this project was started by Mike Mortenson as Jeff mentioned um, he was requesting an outlet for the south east corner of his farm there on Ferguson line there was some work done on the county road and I believe that affected what he was using so he requested for an outlet at that time the township didn't realize um, that this area was actually tributary to uh, the Grauberg drain which happened to be completed by our office by Andy Spreed himself in 1964. Now for a bit of a history lesson, I believe this is the first drain Andy Spreet did in Yarmouth Township. Um, so we had a meeting in September, as Jeff mentioned, most of the owners were present. Um, Mike indicated what he was looking for. Um, there's been lots of work on Mike's property with drains since the Grauber drain was ever completed. Um, there was also some other owners there. And as Jeff mentioned, we received some additional requests. So. Jim and Carl Thompson own a couple farms on the south side of Ferguson Line. They understood improvements needed to happen. Um, and in order to get a proper outlet, we had to go through their property down to the existing drain. Um, through further discussions, Mr. Gredig, who owns a farm on Mapleton Line, um, re requested that we improve the small portion through his lands. That's the former Grobert farm. Um, and then upon further discussions, we Talk to Ed Pearl, who owns the farm on the corner of Ferguson and 74, and he requested an outlet as well. So we put all that information together. We had another meeting in November 20th of this the last year. Um, so the plan as we speak, um, we're going to start in Mapleton Line. The original drain went south of Mapleton Line. 
Um, when the township reconstructed the road, they did some reconfiguring there with the a new surface culvert. So the drain will start at that culvert and essentially head northwesterly up through Jim Thompson's into Gretig's. Now that's the existing part of the drain, which we were replacing. Branch number two, which runs through Thompson's up to Ferguson Line, that is a new drain that's being considered. So the existing drain we're replacing will be a 24 and a 21 inch tile with a 16 inch through Gretig's. Um, the tile that we're proposing, which is branch number two, starts as a 16 inch tile and goes up to an eight inch. And then there's a branch number three, which serves the Pearl Farm, um, which be an eight inch tile. Now, there is some work on the county road, which we, uh, basically is two road bores. Um, that is being completed as well to give those two farmers outlets. Uh, the total cost of the project is approximately $225,000. Um, and you can see in the assessment schedule how it's broke down. The two specials are identified as well. Um, and as you can see, um, do, uh, I'll be honest, I live fairly close to this drain. I know the players. So Andy Spree was nice enough to review this drain, even though he did complete it 56 years prior. So hopefully this isn't his last one, but this is the first drain he did in Yarmouth. And, uh, he was happy to review it to be replaced. But if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Brandon. I'm gonna ask uh, the deputy clerk if there's been any correspondence received concerning this drain. Madam Mayor, no correspondence has been received. Okay, do any members of council have any questions? Councilor Kravitz. Well, just curious, what is the non-grantable? portion in that. What's that? I don't understand that. Okay, so that's probably in reference to the Thompson property. So mm -hmm. so this is owned by well, Jim and Carl. I believe Jim has passed. But um, So when we looked at the project, I sat down with Carl. I met him out at the farm there and we went through um, the design and how the drain would be designed. Now, the non-grantable portion. So Mr. Thompson requested you know, this drain has uh, steep gradients. And if you ever drive down Highway 74, you'll see um, where the H.E. Thompson drain is, there's a grass waterway. Um, and where this drain is going, there is a lot of rail erosion. Um, Mr. Thompson's owned this farm for quite a few years. The non-grantable comes to if he's requested to upsize the tile in his property. Now, we did this on the main drain only. so. That is the portion from Mapleton Line up to Peter Gretig's fence. So essentially that drain we proposed as an inch and a half with Carl requesting a two inch design, it changed a little bit of the tile to be larger. So in this property, it's a 24 inch tile and a 21 inch tile. So it, it modified the design slightly. And what you see there with that $5,780 that is the difference to go from an inch and a half design to a two inch design. And so he pays that directly. Um, that is not grantable by the province because the maximum coefficient the province will pay is an inch and a half. So um, that's a, a benefit to that property only. And a lot of that is to, is to hopefully with the two inch design and with some private work completed by the Thompsons, they can hopefully, uh, eliminate the grass waterway and work that farm right through. Um, that's the intention. Now there's rather steep gradients in this area as you go up that ridge. Um, you know, this drain is at a 0.8%, but if he can catch as much surface water as possible, and that's being accomplished by some berming as well um, at the, between Gretigs and Thompson's. And once that water's underground, it shouldn't cause the issues that it's causing now. Now this drain, was completed in 1964. And at that time, uh, when Andy completed it, it replaced a large portion of ditch, which was pretty common at the time. But hopefully by increasing the tile size and um, Mr. Thompson completing some private work, he can eliminate most of that erosion. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Other questions from any members of council?
Seeing none, if anyone has signed the petition wishes to withdraw their name from it, they may do so now by putting their withdrawal in writing, signing it, and filing it with the deputy clerk, Diane Wilson, email to dwilson at centralogan.org. Anyone who has not signed the petition and wishes to do so may add their name to the petition at this time by contacting Diane Wilson again at dwilson at centralogan.org. Before opening the meeting to questions from the landowners, sorry, um, or before I open it to questions from the floor from affected landowners, please be, please be advised that if any affected landowner wishes to receive further information on the actions of council regarding the Grauberg drain, please email Diane Wilson at dwilson at centralogan.org or contact her by phone at the municipal office at 519-631-4860, extension 286. We will now open the meeting to questions from the public. For those attending who have not already submitted their concerns or comments to the municipality. If you are listening on your computer, tablet, or smartphone, please click the raise hand icon. And if you've called into the meeting using a telephone, please dial star nine. The questions will be answered in a sequential order. When given the opportunity to speak, please provide your name and address for the record. Mr. Perrin, do we have people waiting? Uh, Madam Mayor, there are people in the uh, waiting room. I do not see any uh, requests to address the report. So please, if you want to speak, push the raise hand or star nine. Mr. Perrin will let me know if anyone wishes to speak or has any questions. Still none? Still none, Madam Mayor. Thank you. I would say the, uh, if there are no further questions, please be advised that any person wishing further information on the actions of council regarding the Grauberg drain, please email Diane Wilson at dwilson at central Algon or contact her by phone at 519-631-4860 at extension 286. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, Brandon. Oh, thank you. Have a good nice evening. Thanks. The next one is in what, two minutes? Okay, so now I go to the Dell Drain. I'll throw by it today. Get those from you out of there. Thank you. I wondered because it, it I think I can call this meeting to order. Um, it is now 6.45.
So this is a public meeting as required by section 42 of the drainage act to afford affected landowners an opportunity to make representation with respect to the engineer's report regarding the Dell drain outlet. Does any member of council have a disclosure of interest concerning this proposal? Seeing none, the purpose of the meeting is to discuss the technical aspects of the engineer's report for the Dell drain outlet. Concerns regarding individual assessments will not be dealt with until after the final report has been considered, adopted, and a provisional bylaw passed. A meeting for the Court of Revision regarding assessments will be scheduled at a later date and notice will be mailed to the owner of every property that has been assessed into the subject drain. I'm going to call on uh, Jeff Brooks, our Director of Infrastructure and Community Services to give a review of the process to date. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, municipality appointed Mark Hernandez of Dillon Consulting to prepare a report under Section 78 of the Ontario Drainage Act on February 17, 2016. This was in response to a request for maintenance from John Miller of Barnum's Gully Line whose land is adjacent to the existing Dell Drain outlet. On March 10th, 2016, the on-site meeting was held to discuss the issues. Mark Hernandez submitted a draft report on March 2nd, 2020. A site meeting was held on September 30th, 2020 to discuss the draft report with the landowners. Subsequent to that, another landowner meeting was held on November 13th, 2020 through Zoom to address some of the concerns of the uh, landowners. The final report and notices of tonight's, or sorry, Mark Hernandez submitted his final report on November 26th of 2020. And the final report and notices of tonight's meeting to consider were mailed to residents, of, residents in January of 2021. Thank you very much, much, Mr. Brooks. I'm going to now introduce Mark Hernandez of Dillon Consulting, and I'm going to ask him to summarize the report for us. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the project commenced with the request of Mr. Miller due to concerns with erosion and the potential impacts to his residence as a result thereof. Um, as, uh, as was mentioned, the site meeting was held with the landowners in 2016, and initially the proposed improvements entailed extending the pipe enclosure to the lake. A subsequent meeting was held with the Kettle Creek Conservation Authority, um, a geotechnical engineer and a contractor to ensure that no red flags were identified at the outset. Um, and topographical survey and site ex examinations were completed thereafter and in subsequent reviews um, over, the, over the course of the project to date. It's clear that once the water leaves the pipe and reaches beyond the existing concrete mat, there is significant erosion being observed as evidenced by the vertical drop at the end of the mat, which has increased over the past number of years. When you look at stable slope projections, it is approaching the landowner's residence and the proposed works seek to address this concern. Uh, discussions with the municipality were held regarding the development of a cost-effective solution and through discussions with the geotechnical engineer, an assessment was completed uh, comparing the erosion taking place due to the drain and the erosion taking place at the lake. Based on this analysis, the lake, um, the length of the proposed enclosure was um, confirmed. Um, as this was unfolding, there were also discussions on other potential ways to address the erosion concern. Um, including even the potential of relocating the residents. However, these were not identified as the preferred approach. The scope of work generally includes clearing, grubbing, and removal of debris, earthworks to create a working platform, the extension of approximately 83 meters of piping using high density, high density polyethylene, the addition of a new manhole to transition between the existing and new pipe, and the installation of erosion control. It should be noted that the site consists of a large ravine with very steep banks, making the access to the site and the construction of the proposed works challenging and consequently affecting the costs. Um, I would be happy to, have, be happy to answer any questions at the appropriate time. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. I'm going to ask uh, our deputy clerk if she's received any correspondence concerning the Dell drain. Madam Mayor, correspondence has been received dated February the 3rd, 2021. It includes the signatures of 22 landowners who are challenging the design of the drain as the redesign has no benefit to them. Said correspondence has been circulated to council staff and the engineer. 
Thank you. Before I open the floor, I'm sorry, do any members of council have any questions at this point? Seeing none. Before I open the floor to questions from the affected landowners, please be advised that if any affected landowner wishes to receive further information on the actions of council regarding the Dell drain outlet, please email Diane Wilson at dwilson at centralalgon.org or contact her by phone at the municipal office, which is 519-631-4860 and she's extension 286. We now open the meeting to questions from the public who, for those attending who've not already submitted their concerns or comments to the municipality. If you are listening on your computer, tablet or smartphone, please click the raise hand icon. And if you have called into the meeting using a telephone, please dial star nine. The questions will be answered in a sequential order when given the opportunity to speak. Please provide your name and address for the record. Mr. Perrin. Madam Mayor, I have uh, four individuals in the waiting room. I see no hands at this time. Please, if you want to ask a question, you're in the waiting room. Uh, if yep. you need help I, with, sorry, Mr. Perrin. Yeah, I have uh, Walter. Okay, Walter, go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, I'm here with Gary in my home, Gary Somerville, and uh, we are, and, and the rest of us are, are concerned about the benefit to even the uh, Mr. Miller of the construction that's carried out at the bottom of the outlet uh for the dell drain I, i'm assuming walter it's walter hayhoe correct i just you yeah, didn't state your name yeah, and address I'm, I'm sorry it's walter hayhoe and I, I again i'm here with gary somerville yes we're trying to uh raise some kind of alarm at the cost of the the cost of the drain and the benefit and the ratio that's uh the ratio of the cost of benefit for each of us on the uh, uphill side of the end of the drain. I don't have anything more to say than just that we we find the the engineer's report and the it's lacking. It is lacking in the. Uh, the end of the Dell drain, according to the the Dell drain outlet report of November the 26, 2020, indicates that the drainage act, the ravine, this is on page two, under existing conditions, the ravine downstream of the outlet pipe currently does not have status under the drainage act. If it has no status beyond the end of the, the current drain that's there presently, all the repairs are being done downstream from uh, uh, station number zero, zero, zero on the, uh, and we're concerned that, that the efforts to correct it beyond the end of the drain are too expensive and also are not going to be effective in the long run. I think that is also referred to in uh, Bedell's engineering report on page four uh, confirmed the proposed, uh, this is the second paragraph down on page four of the November 26 report. The Vidal engineering confirmed that while the proposed pipe extension will reduce the erosion of, in the gu or of the gully, it will not prevent its continual continuance entirely as groundwater and precipitation will continue to act on the banks. Erosion from 
uh, in addition, erosion from the erosion flows downstream of the proposed pipe outlet will continue. So in other words, the, 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 the repair or the extension of it is, is not very, it's, it's not a very durable outlet. And it's beyond the end of the, uh, back to page two again, it's beyond the end that it has no status under the drainage act beyond the end of station number zero, zero, zero. You want to say anything, Gary? Oh, not a moment. I'm going to ask if Mr. Hernandez would respond to you, Walter, um, just so that you can hear what his thoughts are. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Um, so um, the, this report seeks to extend the Dell drain by 83 meters, and that would take place through um, acceptance of this report, if that should be the case. Um, I will defer to Mr. Medell with respect to the geotechnical analysis because he was the he is the geotechnical expert who was engaged by the municipality to speak to the erosion concerns. Um, but I, I want to just simplify it by saying that um, the the current state of the Dell drain, where it releases into an open ravine and causes erosion at the toe. Um, you can imagine that if the bottom is, um, uh, is, is eroded, then everything above it is compromised. And while there may be other sources of erosion, I think you know, we can all appreciate that there are other forms of erosion, wind erosion, erosion from rain and groundwater. Um, we don't see that, and I'll let Mr. Bedell again speak to that as well, um, as being the, the predominant issue. So all we were trying to say is that it is, you know, the proposed works are not a all-encompassing, you know, silver bullet, if you will. There will still be other forms of erosion, but we see this as being, um, uh, you know, the most significant contributor and risk to his, uh, to Mr. Miller's property. So I would, I would ask that uh, if possible, Mr. Bedell could expand on that. Go ahead, Mr. Bedell. You're muted, Phil. Thank you. There are two issues with regard to the stability of the side slopes. One is the long-term stability from a geotechnical perspective, and the other is the short-term stability. The long-term stability based on engineering analysis indicates that an overall two to one, two horizontal to one vertical side slope is required to get an absolute minimum factor of safety of 1.0. This daylights a potential failure surface essentially at the edge of the existing residence. What exists now is that condition immediately downstream of the existing pipe outlet. The top of the existing slope is not at that location. It is further to the east. The reason for that is the upper soils, which are predominantly sands, are standing for a height of several meters in an almost vertical condition, which is typical of that type of material. There is seepage, groundwater seepage, at the base of that upper layer, which contributes some minimal flow to the drain system. In terms of the design flow of a drain, it's minimal. That upper slope will, with the fullness of time, continue to regress and flatten to an inclination in the order of two horizontal to one vertical. The analysis that we've carried out is using that inclination and in combination with the effect of the on continuing regression of the lakeshore bluff, try and come up with a compromise between a lifespan of what the, the residents would be impacted with the regressing lakeshore bluff and what is reasonable to assume for the drain gully side slopes. It's not a particularly straightforward computation, but in my opinion, it represents a reasonable balance between the two conditions. And if memory serves correct, it predicts a lifespan 
in the order 35 years. The regression of the lake shore cannot realistically be prevented. It's going to happen. It's just, it's inevitable. The gully can be dealt with, the drain compact impact on the gully can be dealt with and protect that residence for something in the order of 35 years before the lakeshore bluff overwhelms it. Thank you, Mr. Bedell. Walter, do you have anything more you'd like to say? Yes, was there a coastal engineer involved in any of these uh, uh, looking after the edge of the bank? We know the bank uh, along Lake Erie has very extraordinary conditions. And was there ever a coastal engineer involved in, in the uh, uh, giving a blessing to the, uh, the engineering that's been done? I understand that there's been tough conditions up along Lake Huron and the, those conditions, um, this, I've been talking to, um, I'll, I'll come across his name here in a minute. But the, the, the idea of the lake bank, we need some kind of special uh, person or people who are familiar with the, uh, the uh, trying to restore and establish outlets along the coast of Canada or the, or the right along the coast of the Great Lakes. Do you know, was any, anyone, in, has anyone inquired of a coastal engineer in getting his opinions? Mr. Hernandez? Sorry? We, we did not uh, get, a, get a coastal engineer involved. Um, again, I would defer to Mr. Bedell, but it was based on um, aerial photography of the site over a number of years. So again, I would def defer to Phil on that one. Go ahead, Mr. Bedell. Mark is, Mark is correct. It was not a coastal engineer involved. We relied on the published reports prepared by coastal engineers, which give a very realistic prediction based on historical data of what future regressions are likely to be. From a practical point of view, you cannot stop the regression. It's simply economically not feasible. It's technically not feasible. And in terms of getting permitting from the senior levels of government, frankly, it will never happen. Thank you. Walter, do you wish to speak again? Um, can I say something, uh, Gary Somerville? Certainly, Gary. Yes. Uh, the only thing I don't understand, uh, there was a bunch of the landowners and Mr. Miller went down in mid-December so we all could have a good look from the bottom side. We looked at it quite a few times from the top side, but definitely it does look different from the bottom side. And I honestly can't see living along the lake my whole life that what they're proposing to do is going to save Mr. Miller's property 35 years by the heights of the bank and the amount of water and stuff coming out of those banks at the lower end of his property, which has nothing to do with the outlet of the drain, is not going to stop what's happening there uh, on the top side. And I have a real hard time believing that that's going to save 35 years there. And that's another problem. We don't want to do something like this and five years to be down the road in the same boat here. Is there any guarantee that that's going to do that? Because it just seems like we go on and on with this thing and we did a bunch of work in 97 and now we're back into more repairs. And probably looking at hindsight, if this was so important, it should have been done in 97. That's all I have to say at the moment. Thank you, Gary. Uh, Mr. Bedell, do you wish to respond to that or Mr. Hernandez? I can respond to that, I believe. If that work was done in 97, you've got 34 years out of it. That's getting pretty close to the 35 we're projecting. I'm being a bit silly here. 
to protect the property in that time frame, it is my opinion you have to do something. The drain will continue to downcut. If you look at the historical air photographs of the drain system downstream of the existing pipe outlet, it is continually eroding. There is no vegetation being established. It's simply a bare eroding invert. Mr. Hale or Mr. Somerville, anything more? Yes, uh, the the uh, it's Walter Hayhoe here again. The do we as landowners on the watershed have any say on whether or not the end of the drain is where they have established it on page two of that report? Do we have a say in whether or not we want that extended, or I mean the engineer has recommended that we extend it beyond where it, where it ends, terminates right now at station 0, 0.00. Do I as a, do we as landowners, all 22 of us, have any say on whether or not to extend that? Who would like to respond to that one? Mr. Brooks, go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll respond here, Madam Mayor, and then uh, Mark or Phil can hop in if they feel necessary here. So um, I, I'm going to speak to the municipality's um, obligation here. So the municipality has an obligation uh, to ensure that uh, a municipal drain outlet is taken to a legal and adequate outlet. And when I say legal and adequate, that means a location where it's not creating damage to adjoining landowners. Uh, in 1997, a drain repair was done here. That drain repair has held up fairly well. And in 97, it was determined that the current outlet location of that drain was a legal and adequate outlet. Well, here we are 20 some years later, and it looks like uh, th that outlet location in 97 uh, would have benefit benefited by being extended another 85 meters as we're doing here. So it's the municipality's obligation to ensure that the drain is not creating damage uh, to adjoining landowners. So that's really the municipality's obligation, um, regardless um, of the upstream landowner. Mr. Bedell or Mr. Hernandez, do you wish to say anything? I'd like to add a, a couple of comments. I, I understand very fully the landowner's concern about the cost of this work. It is very expensive, but it is almost a unique situation with municipal drains in Ontario outletting into the Great Lakes. It's extremely high bluff. It's eroding very rapidly. The whole situation is in limbo. From my own personal experience on the farm that I live on, I'm at the bottom of a similar drain, not to this order of magnitude, but I just received a fairly healthy bill repairing or upgrading an outlet to support the contribution of water flows from upstream landowners. So I sympathize with their position. Unfortunately, there isn't any viable option. I've worked on a number of outlets for municipal drains in other municipalities. In some cases, there have been more economical situations where we, different solutions could be adapted. Here, it is simply not possible from a geotechnical engineering perspective. More questions or comments? And Mr. Perrin, I should ask you, do you have others in the waiting room? I, I do. So uh, what I can do is uh, uh, mute uh, Mr. Hayhoe and Mr. Somerville and I can uh, recognize uh, the next person. And then if they have another question, they can put their hand up again. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I okay. see a phone number. Um, if you could state your name and address, uh, that it would be much appreciated. And then go ahead and ask your questions. Hi, it's Roger Somerville. Can you hear me? Yes, we and, can, uh, Roger. And Jeff Ferguson's here as well. Okay, Jeff, we hear you both. We okay. lost our Zoom connection, so we've gotten to dial up here. Okay. Go ahead, Roger. Okay, 
my concerns is the design of the drain when they started and, and what it's done there, it's done exactly what it was supposed to do. There's nothing wrong with the bottom of the drain, the way it's down through there. It's not the erosion, it's not the water coming down from the drain that's causing the problem. It's halfway up between the sand and the weeping on top of the clay. It's got nothing to do with the drain at all. The drain is just taking the flow. When it, when it washes down into the drain, the drain's carrying it to the lake. It's not the problem of the drain that is the issue here. The issue is the bank is caving in and it's going to the expense of everybody that's on the drain, which it shouldn't be charged to because it's not the drain's problem to begin with. It's the guy in the house's problem because it's the lake bank that's causing and all the erosion on the banks. And it's the same all over. It's not the drain, the flow of the drain, the amount. So I don't understand why they're giving the issue to the drain for the problem of the homeowner where the bank is caving in, which it's not really our problem to begin with. Thank you, Roger. I will ask uh, Mr. Bedell or Mr. Hernandez to respond. Uh, excuse me, Madam Mayor. My response would be that the erosion and the bottom of the gully due to the drain flows is the major contributing to the slope instability. The instability in the upper portion of the slope, quite correctly, is due to the sand layers in the near surface strata collapsing. This is an ongoing process. It won't be stopped by this. That is an issue of the landowners and he needs to be clearly aware of that. If the drain does not stop eroding at the toe and lowering the drain invert, that slope will continue to regress overall, both the clay beneath the sand and the sand towards the house. There's very clear evidence that the invert of the drain is not stable. It's being eroded. The historical air photographs very clearly demonstrate that. Have anything else you want to ask, Roger? Well, if that's the case, then the bottom of the, the, the creek should be 20, 30 feet wide for the erosion. It's not wider than it has been all the way along. It's still narrow at the bottom. It's not, it's, if the bottom was not holding there where it's supposed to be, or the water was washing out, it should be 30, 40 feet wide at the bottom where the water's flowing, but it's not. It's still narrow like it has been all along. Mr. Bedell? I'm sorry, I disagree. The fact that it is not wide very clearly demonstrates that it is down cutting, and it's down cutting at the very bottom in a V notch and it is going down, it is not going laterally. If it were going laterally, as you suggest, there would be a bit of a floodplain there. There is absolutely none of that. It is a V shaped ravine. I got a question for you, Phil. Have you ever been down the drain walk down instead of looking at it from the top? It's interesting looking at it from the top, but all the landowners, we went down to the bottom and it took us a long time and it really checked our wind level. But when you get down to the bottom and you look up straight at that wall by the landowner's house, how it's straight for 50, 70 feet, or probably in your meter world, 20 meters or more, and you see the sand layer, and then you see the clay, and you see the water running through the sand layer and coming out on the clay. It's like, to me, partly what you talked about is You've talked a little bit in circles here, Phil, because you talked about the whole lake. We start in Windsor and we go to Niagara Falls. The whole lake is unstable. And this is pretty much the same thing that is going on here. There's a ravine, there's a cut here, but essentially this drain is just like all other lake banks along all of Lake Erie. Now, you've got to go to the bottom. And you have you been to the, have you been by foot down to the drain? Phil. I will confess I have not walked it. <clears throat> you should go for a walk because the, the view that you get from the top 
compared to the view when you get to the bottom. When you look straight up at these lake banks, you'd go, God, I'm in an unsafe spot. Because when you refer to that two-to-one slope and you're down there, you'd think the two-to-one slope takes out the house that we're talking about and would get you to the road. So I hear you on your two-to-one slope. Phil, when you're standing at the top and looking down, it's one thing. But you got to get your ass down there to the bottom and then look up at that embankment and how, how many feet it is. Your two-to-one slope, the house is gone. We are talking in circles here. The house on a two-to-one slope is gone, and we're going to be starting to be concerned about the road on the two-to-one slope. So this, it's no different here, as you talked about in your circle talk, is the lakeshore banks are unstable, and that's what we're seeing there is the lake shore, this is just like a cut in the ravine. It's not like this is part of the ravine, but it's the lake shore because we're going from elevation of what is it, 220, 250 feet down to the lake at the bottom at 200. We're, we're dropping elevation of 220 feet in here at least, and it's pretty much straight up and down when you're looking at the bottom. Okay, no wonder Jeff. it's falling in, and no wonder the next cut could be, you know, you're talking 35 years. Thank you. Um, Phil, do you have anything you wish to say? I'm, I'm going to say, uh, Jeff, your language is inappropriate and your insults to, we, we try to treat everyone with respect in these meetings. And we want to respect you and uh, all the other landowners. And we do want to give you a chance to get your questions answered. But Mr. F uh, Bedell, is there anything you wish to say at all? I, I agree with the last caller. When you look at this slope from the bottom, it is probably nothing short of terrifying. I have looked at these slopes in other instances. The existing slope is not at a two to one inclination from the existing invert. With the proposed grading and the drain repair in that area, it creates a two to one slope, which is essentially at the edge of the existing residence. Thank you. Mr. Perrin, is there anyone else waiting to ask a question? You appear to be on mute, Mr. Perrin. Go ahead, John. Okay. Go ahead, John. State your name and address, please. You need to unmute. You're still muted, John. Are you able to unmute? There, you're unmuted now, you can speak. Sorry, I'm a little problem here. <laughs> can you guys hear me? Yes, we can now. Sorry about that. Yeah, um, it's John Miller speaking. I'm the one that lives at the residence now. And uh, all I got to say is uh, I took some pictures back in 2014 before uh, there was that big sharp drop. So there was a gradual hill that went down, but since, uh, yeah, 2014 in September when I took those pictures, it did wash away from the creek. Uh, it slowly eats away at it and washes it away. And that's the reason that the way it looks like today. That report, when it was brought up, it didn't look like that. It's changed quite a bit since, uh, yeah, the last four or five years. I don't know what else to say. It's just the creek is very close to the house. And then with the elevation you add in there, yeah, it, it'd be right at the house if it was stable. But as time goes on, more and more is just going to wash away. It's never going to be stable. You can see where it cuts. I did send some pictures in, and you can see where uh, there used to be like a wall, and then there's tires up above. And since then, that part's gone. I don't know if you guys have access to those pictures. Uh, I sent them to Mark. If he could, uh, can you post them right now? Mark, can you respond to that? Uh, I, I did forward those through to um, 
the municipality, and I don't know if those are available at the moment. Mr. Brooks, do we have those photographs? Mayor, I will see if I can bring those up. Thank Share. you. John, Mr. Brooks is trying to get the photographs up, so we're just waiting for that. Is there okay. anything more you wish to say? I, it's a bad situation to be in. I don't like putting people in this kind of situation, but they got to understand, I got a lot to lose. I put a lot of money and time into this place and I can't just let it go. Uh, and I know if nothing's done, like there's no pipe at the bottom, it's just gonna keep washing away. Hence that one part, which everyone has seen when we went down in uh, December, there's a piece that's 50 by 50 ballpark that's completely gone. And obviously, yeah, it's out in the lake. Mr. Brooks has found your photographs, um, um, John, and he has one of them up on the screen at present. Yeah, so Hello? can you put that one back up? All right. It's so what on. you see right there is that sharp incline, what uh, everyone's been talking about. And this piece right here used to exist back in uh, 2015. Down along here is the bottom of the creek. And that's what that picture showing. That's present day. Can you go to the next photo? Yeah, just give me a second here. And I did bring this concern up. This was back in uh, September of, uh, no, July of 15th, when they wanted to uh, do branch G and run more water through that ravine. And this is the reason I have these pictures because of my concerns if they actually did, and they did put more uh, water through that uh, ravine. You can go to the next one. That one doesn't show too much. There's another one. So right there, that's back in uh, September of 2014. And what that's showing there is the bottom of the creek and the side of the toe of the hill. And you can see there's almost like, uh, like a wall. Since uh, September of 2014, that's changed. And a lot of that is gone. So what I'm just showing there is just how it changed over the years. And if you go to the next photo, like right now I have 50 feet of the backyard and then a, roughly, I don't know, another 10 past the pines. And that's where that sharp drop happens and then the bottom of the ravine. And then here's where the bottom of the creek is. And uh, right here uh, in, is the side of the hill. And all that's gone on the right-hand side. That's all washed away. There's nothing more you can add, but it's just yeah, it just washes away. It'll never, uh, it'll never build up. And uh, yeah, I'll just keep cutting back further and further. 
I'm assuming, Mr. Uh, Bedell, that you're able to see these, and that I'm assuming uh, these pictures are taken below the drain, like past the drain outlet? That is my understanding, Madam Mayor. They're taken below the existing outlet of the drain. Thank you. And this is the area where they want to put the new, cover that area to put the new um, drain outlet to cover put that some, area. Put some new, put some new hard piping in and actually raise the grade a couple of meters in conjunction with that. Okay. Mr. Perrin, do we have anyone else waiting to speak? Seeing no other hands at this time, Madam Mayor. Thank you. If you wish to speak at all, please raise your hand. No other hands? No other hands. Thank you. If there are no further questions, please be advised that any person wishing further information on the actions of council regarding the Dell Drain outlet, please email Diane Wilson at dwilson at centralelgin.org or contact her by phone at the municipal office 519-631-4860 at extension 286. This meeting is now adjourned. The provisional oh, bylaw has been placed on council's agenda for consideration tonight. Mr. Bedell, did you wish to speak? I'm sorry. No, I don't have anything else to add, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Kravitz, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Just, I'm just looking at the report. The last, um, the original meeting that the engineer did was in 2016. How much of a change is done in a four or five year period there? I, I don't know if this is the location of the drain still the same with all that's changed in the last four years? I guess that goes out the bill. Like how much change is done in four or five years to make this report still valid for the, the new outlet? Mr. Bedell uh, or Mr. Hernandez? Yeah, I, I can take a uh, I guess a first stab at it and then Mr. Bell can speak as well. Um, so I have been out there. Um, I have been in the drain. I have stood at the outlet myself um, on more than one occasion, including as recently as last week. Um, there is there is definitely signs of erosion um, that's continuing beyond the concrete mat at the outlet of the existing pipe. And we are trying to you know, address that. Um, I do believe Mr. Bedell mentioned earlier, it's a matter of if we don't, um, you know, do this work, the concern is, is continuing to destabilize the toe of the bank and, and, and cause issues. Um, I think there's still an opportunity to, to address this concern, but I, I would agree not to let it um, linger too much longer. Um, for, for the benefit of everyone, I think it would be helpful, you know, we've talked and I think the residents have talked about, you know, an area on the bank, which has got a vertical face and looks unstable. And that's absolutely correct. And that will, um, you know, most likely uh, fall in at some point, you know, but that is just short term. You can imagine in a ravine, the banks are not stable, they're not consistent. Um, and what we are talking about is the long term stability um, uh, of, of the banks. And that's where the two to one projection and the relative top of bank to the uh, to the home comes into play. So I don't know, um, Phil, if you have anything more to add to that. <clears throat> the only thing I can add to that is I understand John's concerns. There is an instability problem here, which will impact his residence and there, it cannot be avoided. It will either be the Lakeshore Bluff or the drain outlet in the ravine. By doing this work, we attempt to make the two happen at about the same time. The erosion rate in the ravine and the impacts of it are no more predictable than those from the lakeshore erosion. If people could provide a perfect model, an engineering model for the erosion of the lakeshore, they would be famous worldwide. 
They can't do that. And even to a lesser extent, we cannot do it in the drain system. We know what's going to happen. We know reasonably well what the results will be. And that's the best engineering advice that we can provide. Mr. Gravitz, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Just, just in saying that, like the, to assess the benefit, that's not at this meeting. We don't deal with that. It's just uh, that's fine for now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and I, I did officially close the meeting, but uh, I'm just advising that the the provincial bylaw has been placed on council's agenda for consideration tonight. We are now adjourned. <laughs>